What's up, guys? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, we're going to look at some more midterm review. And essentially, what we have here is we have a helicopter that's holding a 70 kilogram package suspended from a rope that's five meters long. And this helicopter is accelerating upwards at 5.2 meters per second squared and we can neglect friction we want to know all the forces acting on the package the tension of the rope and when the helicopter reaches a speed of 30 meters per second the rope is cut and continues upward what is the distance between the helicopter and the package after two seconds okay so for first and foremost for a if we look at this package this package has a force of fg downwards and it is a force of tension upwards that is it that is the only forces that are acting on this box if we neglect friction now to find the tension of the rope here we need to know um, the net force acting on this rope so we see that for for b we see f net equals i'm going to call up positive so i'm going to say ft minus fg that is the net force acting on this box okay and we know that a equals f net over the total mass okay so now i know the acceleration so a is 5.2 meters per second squared f net equals ft minus fg and m equals 70 kilograms so when I substitute in, I get 5.2 meters per second squared equals Ft minus mg, which now becomes 70 kilograms times, I'm going to use 10 meters per second squared. In your course, you may use 9.8. It really depends on the course you have. And then the mass is 70 kilograms. When we do some algebra here, we say the force of the tension of the rope is 1064 newtons and a common question i get is isn't there an acceleration downward due to gravity because there's no such thing as net acceleration so when they tell us that the acceleration of the system is this that is due to all the net forces. So when I tell you specifically what an acceleration is of an object, even if it's traveling up or downward, that's gonna factor in G already, okay? So that's a, I see that often where students are trying to plug something in for here, which is like the net of the acceleration and little g, that is not the case. The system is accelerating like this, so this is the acceleration of the system, all right, and then we simplify the system to just this package to find force of tension, just like we would in a pulley situation where we find first the acceleration of the system always, and then we apply Newton's second law. Now for this third part, it seems like it might be a little bit tricky, but it's really not, guys, okay? So I'm gonna call when the rope is cut, time equals zero seconds, and we'll say that position equals zero meters. So this is at the time the rope is cut. And if I look at the helicopter, the heli, it is gonna have an acceleration equal to 5.2 meters per second squared. Its initial velocity is 30 meters per second, because that was given. Now this is right when the rope is cut. Now the package, on the other hand, it also has a VI equal to 30 meters per second, okay? Because if the copter is going up at 30, that means the package is going up at 30. But now the rope is cut, it's not going to accelerate due to the helicopter anymore. Now it's going to be in free fall and it's going to accelerate opposite to how it was moving at minus 10 meters per second squared. So now I look at some t equal to two seconds later, I can plug in x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared to find out what is its position going to be at two seconds. And it's gonna be equal to 30 times two plus one half 5.2 times two squared. Guys, I don't need to plug in units here because I've already established I know a variable, a magnitude, and its units. So if you ever givens here, you are okay on substituting in units. That's just gonna be 60 plus 10.4, and I will call that 70 meters. So that means it went from position zero to position 70 
in two seconds. Now I have to see where the package is gonna be using the same formula to find out what its position is gonna be. Well, it had a speed of three, 30 meters per second, and it was going for the same time, two seconds, plus one half. Now here's the major difference, 10 meters per second squared, but Remember guys, it is moving opposite to the original motion, so I have to make that negative. Then we have two seconds squared, and we find out that we have 60 meters minus 20 meters. So that means that its position is at 40 meters. So if this is at 70 and this is at 40, this box has a displacement or a, a difference of distance equal to 30 meters. So after two seconds, the helicopter and the box would be 30 meters apart. Hope that helped guys. Stay tuned for more review questions.